Okay, so let me start off this video by just saying that I have no relationship with Samantha Ravindahl whatsoever. I don't know her personally. She doesn't even know I exist. And while I do really enjoy her content, I'm gonna do my best to keep that separate and be as unbiased as I can and really focus on my overall thoughts and opinions on the Auric products themselves. Now, with that all being said, this video is not a first impressions video. I've actually been trying out these products in multiple different ways, multiple different uses to just really get to know these products. And hopefully I have like a more rounded out opinion to offer you and just my overall thoughts because <laughs> these products are pricey, you know? They are placed into the luxury category. I believe that was Samantha's gold as I remember her saying something like that. And I do feel right off the bat, these products feel luxurious. They have a luxurious look to them, but what happens when it comes to application. So that's what I wanted to get down to the bottom of. That's what I'll be sharing with you today. I have footage of all the different ways I applied them on bare skin, on top of foundation, mix into foundation, all of that jazz. And I'll share that and we will discuss. By the way, if you are new to my channel, new to my face, my name is Ashley Ellix. And if you like what you see so far, then I would love it so much if you would consider subscribing. If you wanna watch the video and you know, wait to subscribe, I understand that too, but just hit that little red button when you're ready to do it. That way you get notified when I post more videos, which is a three times a week, all beauty and lifestyle related and bonus, it's all cruelty free as well. But enough of the pre chit chat, let's dive into these products. Let's discuss my opinions, my thoughts on them and all of that. And if that sounds good and dandy to you, then you know what to do. And if you don't, I will tell you, I'm already out of breath, 32 weeks pregnant over here. Woo! Sit back, hang tight and keep on watching. Boop. All right, so like I said, I have one of the smoke reflex to talk about. I have the shade Temper, just for reference. And then I got the Glow Lust in the shade Selenite, which is the second lightest shade. And for me personally, who is typically a light neutral foundation category and concealers, this color was perfect, perfect choice for me. So we're gonna talk about the Glow Lust first. And listen, <laughs> We can talk all day about how beautiful this packaging is, but I don't wanna take up too much of your time. I think the packaging really speaks for itself. It truly looks like a luxury product. And part of the price is that luxury, that luxury feel that you get. The glass bottle has a great weight to it feels, looks luxurious. It looks like it's gonna withstand the test of time. And there's a reason why I say that. And that's because, where is, where is she? Where is that Charlotte? If you take a look at my Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter, you know, little little guy that everybody's comparing them to. The lettering is all smudged off. It's all coming off. And while this still looks luxurious, this looks like a totally different breed because all 360 around, 360 degrees around, it's just every little detail was definitely thought out in this. And I don't love that the lettering is all smudged off and I barely use this. I don't travel with it. To be honest, this isn't a product that ever really worked that well for me. So we're gonna talk about the comparisons in my opinion and what works for me better. So yeah, I feel like the packaging is definitely, you know, it's, it's within reason to be in that that luxury category it was very well thought out. I know she went all into the cap, you know, and warning us that it's a little bit snug. Now that I've used it quite a few times, it's a little bit easier to take on and off. It doesn't feel like it's gonna get so loose that it's then gonna become useless and it's just gonna pop off. It feels like it will always feel snug, which is nice. And then the pump itself, I also understand why she went into a big spiel because it is really great that you can truly control how much product you pump out because at that $45 price point, we don't wanna waste product. And it's nice to be able to pump just a little bit or do a full big heavy pump. So I appreciate all that time that she took to pick the right pump for this product. I love how thought out that was and the effort I can see in the product. So that's really good. But that's about all I wanted to really say about the packaging because like I said, it speaks for itself. Although I will say, yes, this is a soft matte touch. So it will get fingerprints and stuff on it. So I'm just gonna put that aside and stop touching it and just look at it because it's so pretty. And yes, because the top of the cap has that mirrored auric stamp in it, it does get fingerprints on it. It's not a big deal to me, but I just wanna mention it for you just in case, but it still looks luxurious and all of that. <laughs> now, moving on, I wanna quickly discuss the comparison between the Glow Lust formula and the Charlotte Tilbury formula because I feel like that is very heavily talked about right now. Yes, there are some 
duplicate style products and some dupes on the market that can give you a similar appearance to what this one is giving. But I just wanna say, when it comes to the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter, for me, I never could really truly get on board with this product. At $44, it just, never wowed me. It just wasn't something that I would be excited to gravitate to. And it's something that never really worked that great with my either skin type or maybe it's the products I was using. I don't know what it was. It would always kind of separate a little bit. I didn't like mixing this in with any foundations or anything. It always would turn out weird. I didn't love tapping it onto foundation. That was pretty much the only way I could figure out how to use it though and not separate my, you know, all my hard work and make it look weird. So I was never in in team this. I was trying to use it up, trying to just work it out just because I paid the price already. I paid the piper. So that is why it's weird that it's all rubbed off because it's not something I grab all the time and it utilize. And also this does have a doe foot applicator. You can still control it, but it's just a different feel, okay, than the Auric is. So Basically, to sum up, I would never repurchase this one. It just, it never really looked right. And then with that being said, as far as the consistency goes of the two products, they are very different consistencies in my opinion. The Auric Glow Lust is a much, much thicker consistency, like surprisingly thicker. And then the Hollywood Flawless Filter is very, very thin. I don't know if there's like more water in this one and maybe that's why it separates on my skin and just doesn't look the glowiest and the best and it just doesn't have that oomph that I was looking for but the Auric doesn't do that. It actually sits on my skin nicely but also blends into the foundation at the same time if I'm doing it as a topping product. Now the only time I really felt like these two products were truly similar in appearance and how they looked, not how they feel, not how the packaging is, anything, just actually how they applied is when I put them onto bare skin. Bare skin side by side, I really couldn't tell a difference. So depending on why you're buying or thinking about buying the Auric product, the Hollywood Flawless Filter, if you already have this one and you just like to use it onto bare skin and that's only way you wear it, I think you'll see a lot of similarities between the two. But the differences really come out when you use them in different ways. This one is really hard to use as a mix-in product in my opinion, where the Glow Lust is almost made to be a mix-in and it just works so beautifully. It also goes on top of my foundation so nicely. So let's talk about all the different application methods. Let's forget about Charlotte Tilbury. I'm done with that. I think I you know, made my points of how I feel like they're pretty much different, except in one way. Let's just talk about the application and my feelings of the Glow Lust itself. So like we talked about, $45, you do get $1.1 one three ounces in this so you so you do get a little bit more than charlie tilbury okay but that's the last thing i'm going to say about that you get to get a little bit more so it's kind of a wash it's a dollar difference but it's like a wash but anyways on to bare skin this does look very lovely very beautiful it does have this way of just looking like your skin but my skin doesn't look oily. And that's what I appreciate about this product is never in any of the uses that I've done has my skin just look like a greasy mess. No, it looks like I have glowy skin and just youthful skin and I do appreciate that. So on to bare skin, it looked really beautiful. Either I can apply it into the high points of my face and where I like to just add glow or I could put it all over. Both ways look really pretty. I didn't find that it emphasized my pores or texture in that way, which is nice because some glowy products do. So I think something about this thicker consistency is just meshing really well with at least my skin type. Maybe the thinner products seep into pores and stuff more. I don't know. I don't know what kind of magic's going on behind it, but I do like it that way. Now, the first day I got this in the mail, I actually tried this out off camera just so I can try it in a couple different ways, just not even thinking about anything, just just focusing on the skin and how it's applying and everything. And I tried it out underneath a foundation, just kind of like I would a primer. And I just used like some kind of, I don't remember what it was, but it was like a medium tinted foundation. And I just felt like it wasn't worth it <laughs> because it was lost in the sauce. So I personally wouldn't say to bother using it as a base, even if you know, you want that glow just because I don't know, I didn't see enough of a difference. And then it kind of settled a little bit weird on different parts of my skin. So I wouldn't use it like as a primer. I would personally do it as like a topper 
a topper, I think, or a mix-in. So let's talk about mixing it in. My favorite way you're gonna see right now is actually when I mixed the Glow Lust in with the It Cosmetics Your Skin But Better foundation. I love that combo. I think that it really beefed up the glowiness of this foundation. I don't consider this foundation to be extremely glowy. They call it a natural radiant finish, but I feel like it's a, just a very natural finish. It's not too matte, it's not too glowy. So if you're looking to beef up some of your products, this is a nice addition into some of them. And I, I love how it looked. I think it looked so, so pretty. But with that said, listen, I am somebody that has to powder my face. I can't walk around with a face that feels a little sticky, a little tacky. It's just not the life that I live. So I still have to go in with powder, which pains me because I loved how it looked on a pre-powdered face. When I went to powder my face, yes, it looked a little bit dulled down, looked a little bit more matte. I tried to go easy and try not to powder as much as usual, but alas, like you do lose some of that glowiness, but it still looks pretty. It's just a lot more dulled down, but with that said, <laughs> I was able to try it out on top and go back in and spot glow, like sp instead of spot conceal, spot glow. Go back and add the glow lust to the different areas that I usually like to highlight because I didn't use any powder highlight for the last few days, which was so weird. I just used the glow lust, but I just thought it looked really pretty. Something unique about this product is it just looks more natural. It's definitely more of the lip from within. You're not getting any kind of shimmer particles or glitter particles, nothing like that. It doesn't look fake on the skin. It just looks really nice and glowy. I mean, I am wearing it today. So you can see that cheek. I layered it up a lot because I love the glow factor. I like the highlighted look. And I think that it is a very versatile type of product where you can either add a little bit to get that more subtle glow, or you can really beef it up and layer it up and it layers really, really nicely. Ooh. So my favorite way of using it is as a mix-in with certain foundations. Now today I actually mixed it in with the Urban Decay Stay Naked Hydromaniac. This is also a medium coverage foundation, just like the It Cosmetics. This one is a glowy foundation already. So I just wanted to see what it would look like mixing them in together. And I was surprised. I didn't feel like it mixed in as well with this one as it did the It Cosmetics different formulas, different strokes for different folks. And that's not fitting to what we're talking about, but I don't know. It almost didn't make enough difference to justify wasting a pump of this into this. I mean, it's a different formula. It's gonna just depend on what you're mixing it with. Some things that you mix it with, it's gonna be the perfect marriage between the two. And some of them, it might be just weird. I think just, it's just the fact that it's almost not worth it to waste a pump on an already glowy product, but I wanted to test it out with something different to really give my honest, you know, feedback and try it in so many different ways. So glowy products are ready. Don't waste it on that. Just add it to like on top as a topper, but certain products that you want to beef up the glow, I think that that is really nice and you'll like that pairing. Okay, so that's as far as mixing it into products go. Now as a topping product. So the last way I used it other than today was I put on my full beat face, like full coverage. I wanted to see how it looks when I wanted to do like full glam. So I used my like Tarte Rainforest of the Seat. No, that's not what it's called. Amazonian Clay Foundation. My Tarte Amazonian Clay Foundation, my Tarte Shape Tape, my powders, like the whole kitten caboodle full, full coverage face. And then I wanted to see how everything applied on. So on the first side that you'll see, I actually applied the Glow Lust onto the, prop, the face before I put my powder products on to make sure that it was meshing well that way. Everything went really nicely. I'm looking at you, Charlotte Tilbury, who doesn't always cooperate. This one did. So I was happy with the way that it meshed onto the creamy liquid products that I use. Everything blended really beautifully. Again, though, of course, I lost a little bit of that when I went to powder. So I think if you're a powdering type of person and you don't want to deal with, you know, multiple, multiple layers, it may become kind of fussy, but it just depends what your goals are. So that's why, like I said, I'm trying to give you all the information I can in this video. But then when I went to put some more back on top of all of my powder and topping products, it had no problem going on top, 
which is a big deal to me because I have sworn off like cream highlighters, stick highlighters, those, cause they just always end up picking up the foundation underneath. They don't pr play well with powders and such. Of course, I mean, it's a cream and a powder, but for some crazy reason, and I don't know if it's that thicker consistency of this, this one, has been playing really well with a full face on. I can still go in and add some more on top with this. And I love that. And again, I know I keep comparing it to this and I keep saying I'm done, but this does not play well for me on top of foundations and powders and all of that. It just doesn't. It only works in like one specific way. So to me, overall, this just seems like a more versatile product. So I, like it. I love it. I'm really enjoying my experience with it. So that is my opinion to sum up, to round out, to circle back. How am I feeling about this? I really, really enjoy this product and I appreciate the versatility. There are a couple ways that I would choose not to use it. Like I mentioned, like a primer, I wouldn't bother with. Some foundations, it seems kind of pointless to mix it in, but this pairing, like with the cosmetics, I love that pairing. I love how it looks as a topper. I do still love my crazy intense highlighters that are blinding, but I like that I can wear this and look a little bit softer, you know, and more natural, but I can still beef it up. I mean, this highlight I feel like is glaring at you guys this whole video and it looks beautiful. It looks like it's a part of my skin, my foundation, but it doesn't look greasy, which I like, and it just, it has this way about it. It has a way with words, I don't know, but it does, I just, I'm really enjoying that. I feel like I would buy this again for the $45 price point. Of course, that's me, you have to decide for yourself if that's something that's worth it for you. I feel like it's gonna, you know, it's just really sturdy, luxury feel. It's, it's just a totally different breed than this one. This, I can get on board with. This, I can see becoming a, like, cult following, a, something that everybody's gonna really enjoy. Not everybody, there's always gonna be somebody that doesn't, but I like this. With that said, let's talk about Smoke Reflect, okay? Oh, okay, can I just say, first of all, holy crap, these are expensive, okay? <laughs> My gosh. The reasoning I had behind buying this product, because everybody's gonna have their own reasons, I think. I had two reasons for buying this. Number one, to review it for you guys and find out if it was justified of that price and everything. <laughs> because my job is here on YouTube, right? But number two is I'm pregnant, okay? 32 weeks, I, got a ba I have a baby on the way and I know that my time is gonna be way more limited very soon and I needed to get something that I could do really quick, you know, and not fuss with a million brushes and all the different palettes. So the way she described this, I was like, okay, well, that might be a good choice for me and a good thing to use for when I want to quickly do an eye look, but still feel a little bit, a little more glam, a little more glitzy, you know, and just like I did something, you know, that day. I don't know. So <laughs> that seemed to check the box. And then when I went to order it, I was like, holy crap, whoo, $39. Like that's... That's a lot when you put it into perspective. I mean, you're getting in a way the two products in one, I say loosely, because it is that creamy product in there. And it is a lot of product that you get as far as the cream goes. I've used this. I love this little tab in here, by the way. The packaging, by the way, is just as gorgeous, okay? So I get that luxury feel. I understand that it's very beautiful and the packaging does seem secure. But anyways, it has this cool little thing that you take out and it looks like almost a like the stamp that you put on in the mail, like uh, the wax like embossing stampy thingy. Anyways, you do get a lot of product in here and I have already used this now like five days and it barely looks like I used any. So I know the product's gonna last me a long time as long as it doesn't dry out. And then you have on top, of course, the glittery type of shadow, kind of glittery, kind of shimmery. It's kind of like a finely milled shimmer. But it's still a lot when I think about, okay, $39. And I'm so used to paying around that price for like a big palette with so many different, you know, uses and stuff that it was, it was hard to press that checkout button. So I understand if you're having that issue too in trying to decide whether you want to get this. For some reason, face products to me 
$45, that seems like, okay, it's a ton of product. It seems like it's gonna last me so long that it, it just, it feels more justified when it comes to face products. When it comes to eye products, completely honest, $39 just seems like a lot, okay? So I went with one shade, obviously. I picked the shade Temper, which is supposed to be that rose gold type of shade. So like I said, I, my, my goal is with this to be able to have it to be able to throw on really quickly in the morning or whenever in the day that I get a chance to throw it on, especially once baby's here. And I'm kind of mad because it does work really well for that. It does work beautifully for a very quick look that looks like you've spent, you know, a half an hour on your eye look, but you didn't. Like, I was so impressed by truly how fast this cream product on the bottom applied and blended out. It was incredible. All I did was a little tiny finger dip. I know some people are using their brush, some people are using their fingers. I think that just using your finger really quickly to press it onto the mobile lid, gently pat it out to blend, that's all you really need to do. And it looks banging. It looks like I just sat there and blended and blended and then went in with input on my base and then, you know, just blah, blah. it looks like it took a lot of time, but literally it took what? 20 seconds per eye. That's incredibly fast. Not even, I mean, I didn't count, but you know what I mean? Like it's so fast. So I'm, I'm mad that I do like it and I feel like it still hurts to have that $39 price point. However, I've never used a cream eyeshadow before that I didn't have to set. Um, and even still when I set it, it would crease because I do have slightly hooded eyes and cream products usually can crease on me and it's just a little bit more fussy and might look really good at first and then in a couple hours I'm getting those you know missing patches on my eyes I never had any issues I wore these for over eight hours each time I wore them and I never saw any fading never saw any creasing so the formula of this cream product is banging like I I it's still hard for me to justify the $39 but I can't deny that the formula of the cream base is uh, just amazing. Now let's talk about the topper. I forget how she described it exactly, so forgive me, but I'm just gonna describe it in the way that I feel about it and just the, the qualms that I have with it, I guess. So I mentioned it's kind of like a finely milled, shimmery powder, and when I went to use it, I was very surprised at how dry it felt. I don't know what I was expecting. Maybe I was expecting like a super, super shot consistency. I don't know. It is not like that though. It is very dry feeling. I think she talked about using it with a brush. I find it hard to pick up the product with a brush and then apply on top of that creamy base. The creamy base does set down so you don't have to set it and it looks really nice that way too. But I just love my glitters and shimmers. So I got to set it with this. So I'm usually working with it right after I put the cream on and it, it just shocked me how dry it felt and with that being said hopefully you'll be able to tell but I am getting hard pan already with that and like I said I think I've used it like five times I like you know wipe off my finger and make sure it's not still wet or anything from the cream and I don't love that I'm already getting hard pan and I've kind of like scraped it back a little bit Maybe that's just because I'm using it with my finger and nobody else is doing it that way. I don't know, with a brush, you probably won't get that issue, but I don't feel like it applied enough with a brush. It didn't feel like it was enough oomph. It is nice in the way that you can control how much, you know, shimmer impact you're getting and you could just do like a very light dusting or you can intensify it, but I can also only intensify it so much. I've seen, I try to stay away from reviews usually, but once I have a full opinion, I'll start to look at other people's thoughts and opinions. And I did see uh, Makeup by Soph, is it so Sophie, Sophie? Sorry, she's in the UK, I forget her YouTube name, but she was using a different shade and the impact of the shimmer was just wow. And that's that's just what kind of girl I am. I like a strong glitter. So this one is just a nice, soft, subtle type of glitter. It's the look that I'm getting is not necessarily something that I can't get with another palette. It's not that, okay? So the reason why I like this product versus grabbing a palette is just the convenience factor, okay? And $39 is, it's a convenience fee for having that quick, easily 
put on but still glam looking type of eye product. So maybe hopefully that helps you decide for yourself whether you need to pick one of these up. Yes, there are other ones on the market. I've never gravitated to them because I try not to buy singles, but for the purpose that I'm talking about with the baby on the way or anybody that just wants to just do something really quick, they don't want fuss. We all got like our Zoom meetings and working from home and you just wanna throw something on really quickly and not fuss about it. I mean, this bo this product is checking off all those boxes. I'm not really sure about the whole hard pan. It's the cream, it's the cream shadow that really shines in this is what I'm trying to say because no other cream product for me will last on my eyes and look amazing and be that quick to blend out and that nice. I'm very conflicted in my thoughts and opinions about this because again, it's still hard for me to justify the $39. I don't know if I'll buy any of the other shades right now. This is the one that totally screamed my name. It's not as pinky of a rose gold as some might think. It's not coppery. It's kind of a very neutral rose gold. So it just has this underlyingness of, of pinky warmth, like a little tiny bit. It's just a very nice neutral product, but Oh, you guys, hopefully that was helpful. Let me know down in the comments below how you're feeling about everything, your thoughts and opinions, and make sure you subscribe before you click away. That way I don't get lost in the YouTube sauce and then you'll get notified when I post more videos, which is three times a week. Like I said, all beauty and lifestyle related and follow me over on my socials if you aren't yet, such as TikToks, Twitter, Snapchat. I'm on now in <laughs> Instagram, of course, all at Ashley Ellix, and that way you get some extended content. But thank you so much for stopping by and I hope that you have a great, freaking awesome, wonderful, beautiful, happy, lovely day.